You need to understand, folks, this is a big week for inflation. We will get PPI tomorrow, CPI on Wednesday. We've obviously had a year thus far of inflation readings above expectation. Will it happen again? Will it turn around? Let's have this conversation with Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How are you doing, buddy? Doing great. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. I think this is one that the market didn't have its finger on the pulse of this. Right. This has kind of caught the market off sides. Um, we went from inflation trending downwards starting June 2022, mm-hmm. peaked at 9%. It precipitated downwards towards 3% last fall. And then for, you know, last summer, fall, and then for almost a year now has literally just chopped sideways and then re accelerated more recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, I think, you know, we're, in the market, this is this is what has me a little concerned for this week is the market is leaning towards, you know, a rollover. They're calling for both headline and core to roll over in the inflation readings this week. And when I look at the base effect, it's actually one of the smallest ones around. Yeah. So it, it actually has me concerned that the market will be offside again. And even if the even if inflation is, you know, sideways, yeah. I don't think the market is set up for that. What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. I think the market's pricing 3.4 is the expectation right now on on headline and it was 3.5 last month. So right. just a modest downtick, but nonetheless, the direction is really important. Rate of change is what the market's concerned with. Like is this coming down and settling in? Is this reinflating and moving back upwards, which is a scary proposition if that's the case. Um underlying beneath the surface, I don't also love the commodities commodities yeah. outside of oil. So oil's rolled over some, right? But it was on an absolute moonshot. So it was just due to take a breather there. But if you look at copper, copper's up 26% in the last three months. Gold, silver, copper's the important one though, because copper has yeah. the intrinsic value of building materials, et cetera. Wheat, wheat's up 18% in the last one month. So all these underlying inflationary pressures from the commodity stance are pushing in the wrong direction. And the one that I like to watch more than anything else is good old Dr. Copper, right? And Dr. Mm-hmm. Copper generally precedes inflation by a couple months is at least what it's done historically. And so you've seen this massive ramp and it started in March, took a mm-hmm. little slight breather, but from April and midway through May now, it has been on nothing but an absolute moonshot. Well, that's, uh, I was concerned coming into this conversation. I'm even more concerned now because, you know, we already have two Fed presidents, which was the number I was actually calling for threatening rate hikes, right? I don't think they will have a rate hike. I just want them to threaten the market that they'll have a rate hike. Yep. And if if we get an inflation print that's sideways or heaven forbid up a tenth, you've, you've seriously got to be talking about rate hikes, don't you? I think it's more likely than not, to be honest. Not the rate hike. I think that I think inflation will go sideways, if not higher. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, but I'm just looking to meet the surface. You do get the reprieve from oil on headline, right? Yeah, that has come. That has come in some. Um, but I do think it's more likely that inflation ticks directly sideways or goes up, which is out of consensus view right now. And the market's off sides for that because you went from again. Let's just rewind. You had six to seven interest rate cuts priced in eight months ago. Right. right. And you and I were both on this conversation going, what, what, what are they what, doing? What, what data is leading you to believe that? And right. so now you're down, you went all the way down to one interest rate cut. And then with some light jobs numbers last week, now it's between one and two interest rate cuts. I still don't see the recipe that gets any rate cuts as of right now. And you remember yeah. back at the beginning of the year, the market was still pricing in four or five at the time of conversation. And we both were saying, there's a legitimate chance that no interest rate cuts this yeah. year. I think you pegged me on a number and I think it was 30%. Right. But 30% at the time, again, was when there was five interest rate cuts baked in. I looked yeah. crazy for saying that. But the reality is none of the data showed inflation trending downwards. And I am shocked, shocked at how tepid Jerome Powell was at his yeah. last conference. I was shocked by that. I, I actually had to wear my swing and a miss shirt because I expected him and I, I did. <laughs> do you I, literally I was, have a swing and a miss shirt? I do. Oh, God, I, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I have a swing and a miss and a nail. How, many, it how many times a week do you have to wash it to rewear it? <laughs> <laughs> More often than I would like. More often than I would like. But that's, that's what happens when you take lots of shots. But yeah, I want pal to come out and be hawkish because I was like, that's the meeting. You just sound like a hawk. I was actually hoping he would go pterodactyl, like really hawkish. 
that would set the market up. The market would get kicked in the nuts. It would do a washout. And then we can kind of, you know, build from there. But the yeah. guy was a freaking dove of all doves. And he was. Oh, it was just, it was a bad chess move. It was a There bad was a chess. really interesting comment in that meeting. And I said it directly after the meeting. And I heard it on a couple of podcasts since. And so other people picked that up about it. I wasn't crazy. Is the fact that for the first time ever, he talked about potentially seeing a rollover inflation due to a weakening of the labor market. And that was something that he had not spoken about in the past. And so now you get that, you know, kind of stag, the stagnant economy and the inflation. What was funny to me is he also had a famous quote that he doesn't see the stag or the inflation. But I'm like, yeah. well, the inflation is clear. And the stag <laughs> yeah. Did you is, see that number? <laughs> right. And the stag is a stagnant economy. You're talking yeah. about the concern of a rollover from a labor force. Like that's the stag part of it. So you do, oh, yeah. you just don't want to use that word. If he uses that word, it'll send okay. the market into an absolute tizzy. No. Yeah. One of our guests, Anna Kelly, uh, famously called for stagflation early in the year. And, and, you know, it went from being, you know, a chance to maybe even base case at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's certainly I, so a possibility. I said, I've been t telling our clients, listen, there's three real scenarios that could play out this year. And I've been saying, I don't know which one of these plays out. Like sometimes think that people think they come to a financial advisor because we have some sort of a crystal ball. Like, no, 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 no. We, a smart financial advisor is going to tell you they don't have a crystal ball, but know how to construct a portfolio to handle the different scenarios that can play out. So the three scenarios as I see them is we could trend on this Goldilocks pattern that we were last year where inflation, although, okay, we got a little tick up, but it trends back downwards and economic growth stays positive. In that scenario, I want 100% stocks. Okay. Scenario two is, uh-oh, 5.5% interest rate hikes, although it's a lagged impact, catches up to the economy and forces us into a recession. Okay, I want 100% bonds in that scenario. Scenario three is the stagflation camp or just the inflation part of the camp as well, where you yeah. have inflation start to peak back up. And in that scenario, I don't want stocks or bonds. I want all real assets, things I can put my hands on that appreciate in value when inflation kicks back up, whether it's gold, whether it's oil, whether it's real estate, whether it's farmland, whether it's timber forest. I don't know which one of those is going to play out. And anybody that tells you they do, they're a fool. So you mm -hmm. need to build all three into the portfolio, size it correctly due to your risks, objectives, et cetera, and then move along and adjust as the data comes in. And this is going to be a really interesting week because, again, we get our first reading on PPI tomorrow and CPI Wednesday. Uh, we also have 11 Fed presidents, including Jerome Powell, speaking this week. That's a that's Shut a full docket to them. That's my that's my thought. Shut up. All you're doing is creating this grandstand for you for a future job as a speaker. Exactly. But shut yeah. up. You're confusing the yeah. hell out of the market. Because one person talks this way, one person talks this way. There's no, you know, kind of nature of them that beats to the same drum. And then they come in and objectively across the board, all vote the same way. Yeah. I don't get it. it, I, I don't it get it's it. crazy. Yeah. So again, it's a big week. Again, I think we both are leaning towards flat or a surprise tick up in inflation uh, where the market is leaning where for a tick down. It's, it's you know, if we are right, what do you, I mean, if, if, because it happens 530, at least specific time Wednesday, right. Right. the markets, the market won't be happy. Bonds will rip and the market will be upset. Is that Yeah. Fair? Bonds, bonds will rip in the wrong direction. Yields will rip, rip higher, driving bond yeah. prices lower. A lot oh, of God. people think that, Hey, you know, stocks are going to struggle if we get, you know, higher rates. Okay. That that's probably fair. Bonds are going to struggle worse. Bonds mm, are exactly. directly, you know, they have a, a correlation that is more direct than stocks do because stocks, at least when inflation happens, they can pass through the costs and they've shown the ability to do that very, very well. Very now, well, there's also, yeah. uh, you know, a limit to their ability to pass that through. And we might be getting up against that via, you know, something like a Starbucks. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, bonds on the other side, if you have inflation going higher. It tells higher interest rates for longer. Right now, the bond market is pricing one to two interest rate cuts. If you don't get them, bonds sell off. Again, it's not stocks and bonds. The 60-40 has proven that it has not worked. You need to blend in that inflationary hedge on the outside as well. No, oh, and that's what you guys do at Life Goal Investments. If somebody wanted to reach out or follow you, you got you doing daily stuff on Instagram that's amazing. So shout out to you. Uh, where should people follow you? Yeah, thanks so much. Follow us. We're at Life Goal Investments, Instagram or TikTok, whichever one you're on. There you go.